All right. Okay, welcome and thank you. Like I said, today we've got Dr. Ashley Adams, and she's gonna be talking about grit and growth mindset and getting to the other side of the graduate journey. And so we'll be talking about the power and importance of grit and growth mindset and how to utilize core principles from personal development theory and positive thinking to get through and excel beyond the graduate experience. And so we're coming with the receipts today. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Ashley Adams. She serves as the Director of Student Affairs at Penn State University. She's been working in higher education for 10 years and in her current role supervises a team of student affairs professionals that provide career counseling, student conduct and advocacy, mental health, student club and organization, and student leadership programming. Amongst all of that, she only like she's been working in higher ed for no 10 years, so that's popping. When she's not teaching Penn State students, she runs her lifestyle brand that includes a weekly podcast co-hosted with Marcy Sims and she hosts live events. She has a blog. She has some really great blog posts like seriously. Um, one time she gave us an entire breakdown of her budget and I was like I just like to know you know what people are making in the academic space um, amongst a lot of other amazing topics with the School and Life pod and so by blending her passions for education, storytelling, lifestyle blogging, and personal development I present to you all Dr. Ashley Adams, thank you so much. Um, before she gets started, I'll be moderating the questions um, and I'll be checking them as we go. And um, Ashley, you have the floor. I'm going to mute myself. Okay, now I think I'm unmuted. Hello, everyone. Um, and Alante, thank you so much uh, for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, I am a big fan of Black and in grad school, and I think the work that you're doing is so powerful. And I'm so grateful to everyone um, who is on uh, the um, summit today and, and is going to be engaging me in this conversation. I really do hope that it is a conversation. Feel free to type questions. Um, into the chat as we go along. Um, Alante will be moderating, so she'll um, enter in your questions um, as we go, and then we'll also leave some questions um, at the end. I'm also really happy to take questions um, if uh, you like raise your hand, you can use your, the raise your hand feature, and um, if Alante will allow it, we can unmute you so you can ask your question aloud as well if you'd like. So um, I definitely want this to be a conversation, um, so feel free to interject and ask questions at any point. So with that, we'll get started. Um, I'm really excited to talk grit and growth mindset. This is something that I present a lot on. I spend a lot of time talking to folks about um, personal and professional development and mindset and being thoughtful and um, about how you sort of enter the world and how you navigate the world. And as a, 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 a person with a doctoral degree um, and a podcaster and a, a friend and a sister and all the other titles that I have, it's with my grit and growth mindset that I'm able to do a lot of that. And it's with that same grit and growth mindset that I got through my graduate degree. Um, and it's the same thing that you, will, you all will use to get through yours as well. So um, I'm delighted um, to be invited today and look forward to um, engaging in this conversation with you all. So first up, <clears throat> um, you might be wondering who um, I am and what I do. Um, so I'm an educator, um, as Alante mentioned. Um, I teach for the College of Education and the University in the Northeast. Um, and I also um, am the Director of Student Affairs um, at that same university. I've been here a little over three years and I absolutely love my job. I'm super passionate about the students that I serve. I work in a very innovative and exciting space. Um, and I just really um, enjoy engaging and connecting with students, helping them grow and develop um, and doing that in innovative ways. Um, like Alante mentioned, I've worked in higher education for a little over 10 years. Um, I've done academic affairs, student affairs. Um, I've worked as an academic advisor. Um, and I also teach for the College of Education. Um, so in that role, I... Um, I teach a couple graduate classes in our higher ed master's degree program. Um, I'm also the co-host and founder of School and Life podcast. Uh, School and Life just celebrated our 100th episode last week, so that's a big milestone for us, and we're super proud of that. Um, but um, I've been podcasting for almost two years. Um, it's a, a, a real passion of mine. School and Life is a weekly podcast that comes out every Tuesday. Um, and we say that the show is about life, love, and occasionally libations, because we often drink when we record. But today, I'm just drinking water, so no alcohol here. Um, but 
but uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's something I'm really passionate about. Um, I co-host with my uh, good friend, um, Marcy Sims, who is a licensed clinical psychologist out of Atlanta. And she actually also works in higher education as well uh, for a university in the Atlanta metro area. Um, so two PhDs, uh, podcasting and also working in higher education. So if that's the kind of thing that you're into and you also like hearing about personal professional development, you should definitely check out the podcast. Um, you can find it anywhere um, on your favorite podcast app. And I also put a link to our website where you can find out more about the podcast and the blog and other things that a lot they mentioned. One of my points of pride is that my big sister, um, I have six younger siblings. Um, and, and that's a big uh, source of sort of who I am and how I um, identify. Uh, in fact, on Thursday, um, I'm traveling to my hometown, the St. Louis metro area, uh, to go celebrate my baby sister. She's graduating from eighth grade. Um, this week, and so I'll be going back home to celebrate um, her. Um, I also do a lot of speaking, um, and I'm a traveling host and speaker. Um, just this past weekend, I was in Chicago uh, speaking at um, a women in business conference, and I hosted the conference, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and I do a lot of that work, um, and it's something I'm passionate about. Um, and I'm also the recording secretary for the Beehive. Um, I am one of Beyonce's biggest fans. Um, I'm so passionate about her. Um, she just operates in excellence and that's something that I believe in and something that I will be talking about uh, as we go on into this conversation. So I just want to let you all know um, that it's a big part of my identity and you know I just want to put that up front. So um, enough about me. Um, let's talk about grit and what it is and, and sort of what it means. So uh, grit is a, a, a term that's um, been coined and, and um, sort of further developed by Angela Duckworth, um, an academic psychologist and author um, who defines grit as a combination of passion and perseverance toward the achievement of long-term or top-level goals. And really the, this idea of grit um, focuses around um, sustained commitment, passion, effort, perseverance, and wanting to achieve those long-term goals. So it's um, that idea of like, perseverance or long suffering or that push that that edge that you have if you are really focused and engaged in something that is um you know a focus area for you and that's meaningful and i, I think that you know when um dr duckworth first sort of came to do this type of research um you know a lot of people i think picked it up but over time i think that it started to get a bad rep because people are like you know grit and this idea of grit doesn't um, account for a lot of, um, it, it's not culturally responsive, right? It doesn't account for uh, people who, you know, had to be gritty, had to, you know, grind and do the work and, you know, hustle uh, as, um, you know, as a, as a part of like, you know, terminology from the African American community, like that grit, that grind, that hustle is sort of ingrained into us. And so as we talk about this, I want to be really thoughtful about the the fact that a lot of conversations around grit don't um, include that cultural um, lens. But when I talk about grit, I do. And really, um, I think that if you are a person who um, identifies in some marginalized background, um, you know, whether that's a woman or from an ethnic minority or um, poor or first generation or any of those things, you already have grit. This is not something that you have to develop or figure out how to do. This is something that's innate to how you came into the world um, because you wouldn't be where you are, right? You wouldn't be on this webinar. You wouldn't be in these doctoral and master's degree programs. You wouldn't be completing your first and second years and planning for dissertation if you didn't have grit and perseverance to get where you are. And so what I want to do around this early conversation and grit is just to encourage you that this is something that you already have, right? Like this is not something that you have to figure out. This is something that you might need to hone, right? You might need to refine. But if you um, are a listener of Black in Grad School, that sort of lends, leans into me that you might um, already identify in some of those ways. And so there's so much power in sort of using where you are and where you came from and, and what you got to get here to get where you're going. And so it's the same grit that got you into graduate school, that got you through your undergraduate programs, that got you through high school, that maybe got you through junior high, that's gonna get you um, over the hump. So I wanna just encourage you that it you don't have to be different. You don't have to gain totally new skills and figure this all out again. It really is the grit that got you where you are that's gonna get you where you're going. And 
it's true that you've likely persevered through many hard things, overcoming significant obstacles, and you'll overcome even more. Um, and that's because you already have grit. Uh, but as we refine it, right, as we, as we think more um, intently about grit, it's interest, practice, purpose, and hope that help us refine grit and what it is um, and how we can sort of refine it and, and define it to persevere further. This interest piece is around being curious about something that's typically uh, learned about as a young child. So, you know, as I look to see what programs you're in, um, horticultural sciences and sports administration, um, I saw someone was interested in African American studies um, and business business administration with the MBA. So these are things that you probably have long been interested in. These are things that you've been passionate about, or there's some, there was something that you heard or someone told you you were good at something and it's advanced your career in these ways. That's where your interest comes in around this grit piece. Um, and to have grit and to, to sustain grit, you have to have some interest. Practice. Practice enables deliberate, uh, practice is this deliberate practice and performance of hard work in order to achieve goals. These individuals, people who have grit, work to get better by listening to feedback received by other individuals. So as academicians um, and as students, you all are like literally doing the hard work of practice. That's what school is. Pra school is practice. Writing those papers are practice. Doing that undergraduate and graduate research is practice. Sitting in the lab is practice. You know, working in, um, in the clinic is practice. All of that is practice. Um, and, and going through that practice religiously um, and, you know, through the years of your education is, is a part of refining your grit. Purpose. Uh, this idea of purpose is really around a characteristic uh, related to the integration um, with your identity. Um, so this is a piece that I think is really integral. And, and when we talk to, or when I specifically talk to people um, who might identify with underserved um, minorities, uh, it's your purpose. It's that sort of purpose-driven life. And it's that, it's the connection between interest and practice, practice and purpose that really help you persevere. Because you might have an interest in playing the violin. You might have practiced, uh, you know, for, you know, many years while you were in middle school and in high school. But if you don't feel, feel purpose driven by uh, playing the violin, if that's not something that drives you, if you don't feel like you're able to impact others through that, um, then you're not going to have the grit it's going to take <clears throat> to persevere in that space. And then finally, hope. <clears throat> Hope is that you have an innate belief that there's something that you can do to change your situation or the situation of others. These individuals have growth mindset and they are optimistic. And we're gonna talk more about growth mindset um, coming up here <clears throat> next. <clears throat> but people who have grit understand that humans adapt, learn, and grow in the face of challenge. And it is you know, the idea of hope that you, through perseverance, you can get to the other side. Through perseverance, you can advance your career and your life. Through perseverance and through the attainment of these degrees, you will change the, the trajectory of your lives and the lives of your family and any future children you might have and their future children, right? You might change your community. You might change science and medicine and sports and business. It is that hope that um, guides your grit. And by refining that hope um, and utilizing tools from growth mindset, you'll be able um, to sustain through your graduate journey. So we talked a little bit about grit. And I, I think that as you sort of reflect on this conversation, one of the things that I really want you to take away from this is that this isn't something that you have to... Um, you have to find or figure out how to get. It's likely that you have grit, but it's about the refinement of that grit through interest, practice, purpose, and hope that you can persevere through your graduate journey. So what is growth mindset? Um, one of the things that I really believe about this idea of growth mindset um, is that it's important to start about what it is not. Uh, so growth mindset is more than just positive thinking, right? It's more than just like, everything's going to be fine. You know, I can get through this, no problem. It, it's more than that. It is about intentional practice and conscious decisions um, to look for opportunities to advance. Growth mindset, and I think that this image really displays it really well, 
is that when you have a failure, fixed mindset would be like, failure is the limit of my abilities. I failed, so that means I'm a failure. Growth mindset would be, failure is an opportunity to grow. A fixed mindset might say, um, I'll just stick to what I know. A growth mindset would say, I like to try new things. Um, growth mindset is all about um, the belief and that hope that there's something else that every situation lends itself to something else. And I'll be the first to say, I, I hate the term, everything happens for a reason, or you know, look on the bright side of things. I'm like, this is all fake positive. Like, no, this is horrible. Like, I'm out, my world is falling apart, right? Like, things are not well. You know, I got a C in this class and I can only get two Cs in the class before they drop me. You know, I didn't get my financial aid in time and the rent is due. Um, I, You know, I'm having so many challenges with my lab mates and I think that, you know, um, despite my hard efforts in collaborating with them, they're not interested in connecting with me. Like, those are real situations and, just positive thinking isn't going to change those. But if you can change from the fixed mindset that my lab mates hate me and they're never going to collaborate with me to um, I'm noticing some real challenges in our relationship and I really want to talk through that so that we can advance together because I'm really relying on you to grow and develop as a professional um, in our research. That's a growth mindset. So it's not just like dismissing it or like fake happy. It literally is like identifying the fact that there's a challenge and a problem, but also seeing an opportunity to grow. And I think that that's really um, what, the, the, what differentiates this idea of a growth mindset. So um, there's a couple strategies that I wanna talk to, through around this idea of growth mindset. So the first is to detect. So to, in order to have a growth mindset, in order to like change your shifting from this fixed mindset, like, oh my gosh, I have to focus on this. And I think this is really true for doctoral students. And I'll never forget like being in my doctoral journey and I always tell people, you know, so proud of my um, graduate degree. So, so thrilled to be Dr. Adams. But when I tell you my doctoral journey was one of the loneliest, loneliest periods of my life, it was so isolating because I knew so much about this little bitty tiny, minute, refined thing, right? That nobody else knew more about it than me, but that meant I couldn't talk to nobody about it. So if you can identify with that, um, or you know, as you begin to refine your research, if you can identify with that, let me know in the comments. Type yes, type, oh, I totally get that. Type, I agree. I just wanna see if that resonates with anybody. This idea that you're like studying this very minute, fine, refined thing, and it's really challenging to talk to other people about it. So if that resonates with you, feel free to type in the comments. Yes, I get that. That makes sense. Um, I really just want to know if that's sort of resonating. Um, and if, if, if anybody else connect, it, uh, has challenges with the, the level of isolation in graduate work, because that was definitely something that was true for me. Um, and I think that, you know, my fixed mindset at the time was just like, well, nobody knows anything about this but me. So I have to keep it to myself and I can't talk to my family about it because like, you know, the highest degree my family ever, like anybody in my family got was a, you know, associate's degree. And I couldn't talk to my friends about it because they work full time and they ain't trying to hear me, like they don't consider me being a student a real job. And, you know, I can't talk to my peers about it because while we might be studying the same program or research or, our, um, you know, our stuff is really different. And so, like, I, I just felt really isolated and I'm glad, thank you so much for commenting. Um, it looks like, um, uh, Davisha and Daria and Pamela and Brianna. Great. Like that, that's resonating. Yeah. Um, so good. I'm so glad that that, that makes sense. And so I think that I was really struggling with that. And, um, you know, I think that I did, I did not figure this out in grad school. So that's why I can talk about it with y'all. Cause I, I didn't figure it out until much later, but if I had have had a growth mindset at the time, I would have known that, one, I shouldn't be talking to my peers about it because while their research area might not be the same as mine, um, you know, we do have some similarities in the things that we're learning and I might, you know, they might be studying, um, you know, something completely unrelated, but they might have um, an article in their lit review that might, you know, help me grow um, in my work, or they might um, have a contact for me of somebody that I really need to be talking to, or maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the research. Maybe they just like yoga too, and maybe like to de-stress from this whole lonely process, 
um, you know, we can just do that together on Tuesdays, um, you know, from three to four at the campus gym. And so it really, if I had to fix my mindset and had it on growth and had it on development, I wouldn't have gotten stuck. And so the first sort of key to having this idea of a growth mindset is really around detecting. So identifying the negative thought, identifying the challenge, being upfront with it. One of my favorite researchers, and I think that there's somebody from um, University of Houston here, I believe she's at University of Houston, Brene Brown, she talks about um, clear is kind and kind is clear. And I love that because in order to have a growth mindset, you first have to like tell yourself the truth in your head. So you can't keep saying, oh, everything's fine. I'm fine. It'll be fine. It's not a problem. You need to say there's a problem here. You, you literally need to say there's a challenge. I'm struggling. This isn't working. Um, and not that you're going to give up, but just that you need to acknowledge that it's a thing. Next, reflect. Um, taking the time to reflect and identifying where this negative thought sort of came from and what's the root of the negativity or what's the root of the challenge is really key. So if we go back to that idea around lab mates, right? Like, you know, I feel like they don't like me. They never want to partner with me. I'm feeling super isolated. Um, and then like, like, where does that come from? Or why do I feel like that? Right? So like, is it because whenever I come in, everybody leaves out or I go at times when there's nobody there or, I, I've overheard them saying something about me or it's just vibes. Like, what is it? Right. And like, um, exploring that and reflecting on that and spending some time sort of going through that in your mind and figuring out distilling that, I think it's really critically important. And then reject consciously reject the negative thought and replace it with the alternative thought that might empower you to achieve your goal. So and again, I want to remind you that this is not about positive thinking. This is about identifying that there's a problem, reflecting on what the problem is, how the problem arose, and then rejecting the fact that everybody just hates you and you can't collaborate to figuring out a way that you can address the problem and, how, and, and figuring out how that problem can help you grow. Um, so I think that this is what growth mindset is. And I find that, um, when I move from, um, you know, um, I'm either good at it or I'm not to, I can learn to do anything I want to do. Uh, when I move from, you know, um, I'm so sick and tired of like getting all of this negative feedback and I have so many haters to feedback is constructive and valuable when it's coming from people who really care about me, I can really see the potential in growing. So that's something I want to encourage you to think about. And if you have any sort of challenges in your graduate journey or challenges that you maybe anticipate, feel free to type those into the chat because um, I'd love to hear about those and we can sort of workshop through what like a growth mindset might be around those. So I want to talk, I want to sort of put these two ideas together, right? Grit and growth mindset and how they work together. So grit is you have self-determination, drive, and passion to get things done. Growth mindset is when obstacles arise, you've either already anticipated them and have a plan to navigate around them, or you begin to think about how you can leverage them to your advantage, right? So like either you, like you have grit and that's that self-determination, that drive, that's what got you here, that's what's gonna get you where you're going. And then you pair that, right, with this growth mindset. The fact that obstacles are gonna arise, right? This isn't about fake positive thinking you know stuff is gonna happen, right? So you either anticipate it so that you can figure out a way to navigate around it, or you begin to think about how you can leverage those same challenges to get things done. And when you put those two together, or when you go through that funnel, what it ends in is operating in excellence. You're at the top of your game, you're getting ish done, and you're holding yourself accountable to the highest standards right? And so you have that grit, you have that growth mindset, and then you're operating in excellence. And that is what it's all about. That's, that's the goal, is operating in excellence. Um, so Pamela said, this is so key. I have a Caucasian student move my backpack so that he could sit next to her friends in class. It definitely had a negative impact on how I saw the program and my group mates. And I think that that is so real, um, Pamela, like space matters, right? If you were taking up a space and, you know, somebody wanted you to take up less space, the appropriate thing would be to say, hey, uh, is this your backpack? Do you mind moving it so that, you know, and we could sit together or all together finding somewhere else to sit. But to touch someone's property without their consent is a problem. Um, but, how, you know, thinking about, um, and I, what I often do, and I, 
and I, and this might've been your experience too, Pamela, is that like, maybe you shut down in that moment. Maybe you didn't say anything. Maybe you didn't speak up for yourself. And I always feel a lot of guilt around that. I'm like, man, I should have said something that went okay. Or like, I should have spoke up for myself. But I think that you can do, you know, a couple of things around this idea of growth mindset, right? You can one, not let that one interaction negatively impact, like, you, you know, how you see the whole program, um, you know, and just kind of do that work internally around that reflection piece. You can too, um, you know, take up space where you feel appropriate, uh, but also, you know, be aware of who else is in the space. And I would never give you, um, feedback to shrink, but also just being conscientious is something to sort of think about if they're, you know, limited space. And then the other thing I think about is just like, um, you know, sort of challenging your peers if that happens again. So you got your backpack somewhere and you not, maybe you need it there for some reason. So when somebody's coming up and, you know, they kind of do the whole look around like, oh, hey, would you like me to move my bag? Or if they touch your bag, be like, oh, in the future, just ask me to move it. I don't mind moving it. Right. So you're anticipating that they going to act this way and then you're addressing it right in that moment. Um, and I think that, you know, shifting from, you know, like what is going on with these people? Like they just don't have any manners to like, let me address this with you because I see that you think you, it's okay for you to touch my stuff. It's not, let's go ahead and, and get you to a space where we can be cordial and respectful of each other in spaces. And so I think that that, that is real. Um, so what impedes uh, grit and growth mindset? Because I think what's true is that like, we have grit, we're moving to a space of growth mindset. And of course, we all want to operate in excellence. Um, but there's some things that like impact that, right? There's some things that like get in the way. And so I want to talk a little bit about those. So first up, fatigue, right? Like, you know, um, what's the what's the saying, like, all my life, I had to fight, right? Like, if you've been gritting it out, grinding it out, hustling all your life, a little bit more grit is exhausting. You might be tired. <laughs> you might literally be exhausted from grinding and hustling and doing all this work to get where you are. And it's true that um, while people, particularly from marginalized backgrounds, have a lot of grit, um, it can be exhausting, right? We talk about the black tax um, in the African American community and like how hard it is for us to, um, you know, just like do our work sometimes because there's this tax that comes up um, when we have to mentor junior, uh, you know, level students and we have to, you know, participate in the cultural programs on campus. And, we, you know, like it's, it's, it's wears you out. And so that's real. That fatigue is real. Isms, racism, sexism, um, heteronormative behaviors, um, you know, transphobia, like these isms and phobias are real, right? And so you can have all the grit in the world, but if your, um, you know, your advisor's racist, you know, it, that's, that's just not, you can't grit your way through that, right? And we need to acknowledge that and we need to be thoughtful about that. And so, um, and, and when you experience racism, sexism, classism, um, all those things in the classroom um, or in your research labs, it can be demoralizing, right? Like you like, I worked so hard to get here and I'm being shut out. I'm not being, get, you know, I'm not getting opportunities. I'm not advancing, you know, because of these isms. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. Um, growth mindset, uh, fake optimism. I've talked a little bit about this already, but, um, you know, what's the saying? Like good vibes only. Um, and that's just not real. Like sometimes I have bad vibes. Sometimes I have a bad day. Um, and I can't growth mindset my way out of that. Like some stuff is just messed up. Um, and I have to acknowledge that, right? So if we go back to that, um, to those principles of growth mindset, we're really talking about reflecting, um, uh, you know, where, where that, why I'm in a bad mood, where that's coming from, why I'm struggling, um, and then rejecting that and looking for opportunities to um, alternate to achieve my goals. But that fake optimism can really get in the way. Um, and then imposter syndrome. You know, like I think that again, this is particularly um, a challenge for folks with, um, from marginalized backgrounds. So we, you know, we think, oh, you know, I'm not really good enough or, oh, you know, I don't think I should put my name for that because I don't think people like me or, you know, oh, I don't think I should apply for that scholarship or, I mean, I'm probably not as good as the other people they're considering, right? And so it's this level of imposter syndrome. And I will tell you, 
as a person, um, I've had my PhD for four years. I've been working in higher education for 10 plus years. I still struggle with imposter syndrome, like on a weekly basis. I'm going somewhere like, why do they want me to go? Are they sure they're talking to me? I have wrote five uh, book chapters this year. And every time I submit one, I'm like, well, I don't know if this is really good. Like, I mean, and every time I get accepted, I'm like, me? Like, me? Like, I'm, I'm shot, literally floored every time. Um, it's a little ridiculous. Um, so, so yeah, definitely, definitely, I still struggle with that. And, and that's, and that's an impediment, right? That's an impediment to growth mindset. Um, and then operating in excellence, right? You're at the top of your game, you're getting things done, but you look over and you're like, dang, they publishing mad articles. Like, dang, they already like got they, um, you know, they participants for their research ready. And you're like, this is not this is, I'm not doing a good job. Or, you know, you see your friends who are outside of higher education and they're going on trips and they get married and having babies or not having babies and super happy about it. And you just like, oh man, like the comparison game, well, you will be operating in excellence, but still feel like you're not doing anything when you compare. So how can we, how can we challenge these? How can we get beyond the impediments and get to um, get to success, right? And so what supports great growth mindset? Self-care. Uh, again, you cannot grit your way out of like caring for yourself. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, the kind of self-care that does include manis and petties and also the kind of self-care that doesn't include eating fried food every day right? So a lot of people now are just like, self-care is more than just getting your nails done, sipping lattes and going on trips. I'm like, girl, include that too. You need that kind of self-care, but you also need the kind of self-care where it's just like, let me like shut off all the lights in my house and stare at a wall, <laughs> right? Like, let me literally not do anything for a little while. And so um, it's both of those that's really critically important. Um, and I just want to sort of raise that. Um, utilizing existing resources. Man, when I tell you, you cannot grit your way through um, some, some things, right? And so utilize the writing center at, at, on campus. Utilize the, um, the fitness center. Utilize the counseling center. Utilize the wellness suites. Utilize the natatorium. Utilize the, like, utilize everything that that university has to offer. One, because you're paying for it, but two, because you need to utilize the existing resources, utilize financial aid, you know, figure out a way to talk to those people and get what you need. So often we try to grit our way through things when there's a resource that could just help you with that. If you need to go to the food pantry on campus, just go to the food pantry. Don't be hungry. Just go to the resource, right? And so, um, this is so critical and, and it matters so much. So really just want to encourage you to utilize existing resources and don't get caught up in, oh, I'm just going to persevere. Like, no, like get, get the help you need because <clears throat> much of it exists. With the growth mindset piece, have a big pitch, have, a, or excuse me, be a big picture thinker. Um, when it comes to growth mindset, you can't let the little things impede you right? Those little microaggressions, um, the little, um, and when I say little, that doesn't minimize the impact, right? I'm just talking about like how they kind of show up in your day. Like somebody moves your backpack or somebody says something like off color to you or, um, you know, those kind of things. You can't let those things distract you from the reason why you're there, the reason why you're earning this degree, the, the, the growth in, in, in the field you're going to have um, and the impact you're going to have. Um, you, you need to be a big picture thinker. Um, think about the end in mind, right? Think, be thinking in that way. And then having a mentor. There is never a conversation I'm having with anybody where I'm not talking about mentorship. You must have a mentor. It is critical. And what is true is that you need a mentor that's in your program or like somebody that's in your field, but you also need somebody that's totally out of that. And I have two points about mentorship that I really want to hone in on. Um, one, and if you follow us on um, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, Twitter, you, you will have seen me talk about this. And I'll put um, the at for School and Life 
um, pod in the chat. Um, so you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. But um, I did a post today that talked about some of the greatest advice I ever received. And I received it for from a mentor is that most of the decisions about my career will happen when I'm not in the room. Which means that most of the time, you know, most of the, the promotions and the opportunity, I mean, even when I think back to my dissertation, when, you know, they were deciding whether, you know, they were going to, um, uh, you know, whether I uh, defended my dissertation successfully or not, I wasn't in the room. Most of the decisions that will happen about your life and your career will happen when you are not in the room. So you must have someone in the room who can vouch for you, who can speak up for you, who can signal boost for you, who can put on for you. So make sure you have a mentor who can do that. Make sure you do good work so people can speak highly of you when you're not even in the room. And then finally, um, operating in excellence, what supports that is assessment and signal boosting. You don't know if you're operating in excellence until you assess it. And I'm not talking about comparing it against somebody else's. I'm saying measured success. If you were supposed to write 10 pages this week, then you have better write 10 pages and you had better make sure that the word count and the, um, you know, and, and everything is together. If you were supposed to write that lit review, you need to be assessing how long it's taking you and if you're getting it done in the, in the time allowed. Um, and so it's through assessment, right? It's through that assessment. Um, and then signal boosting. Um, I really love the work of Sida, uh, Sida, Sida sister, Sida sis. sis. Uh, she does some amazing work, and it's all around signal boosting. Um, it's all around advancing um, the scholarly research and excellence of uh, women in um, in research. And so it's through signal boosting and operating in excellence um, and assessing your work um, that really supports this grit and growth mindset. So I know we have about um, 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna open it up for questions. Feel free to type those questions into the chat. Um, Alante, if anything was coming in on Twitter or anywhere else on social media, feel free to um, share that with me and I can answer questions. Um, I talk a lot about personal professional development, grit and, gro grit and growth mindset um, on the podcast. Um, and in fact, this week's episode is called Protect Your Rep. It came out today. Um, and it's all about protecting your um, personal and professional reputation. So if you're a podcast listener um, and you want to hear more about um, personal and professional development, definitely check out the podcast. It's a, a topic that we talk about very often. Um, but occasionally um, we talk about other things too. Um, on the podcast, you can hear all kinds of topics. Um, and it's, it's something that we're really passionate about. We talk about everything from love and money and sex and relationships to personal professional development. So you get a little bit of everything. And if you're a new listener, you have 101 episodes to catch up on. So um, feel free to dive into the podcast. And then finally, I'd love to stay connected with you. Um, as I mentioned, you can follow us on social at School and Life Pod. That's S C H. O-L-I-N, Life Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Uh, if you are looking for mentorship in need of a speaker for um, some um, program at, uh, at school, or if there's other ways that I could serve you, you can email uh, at hello at schoolandlifepod.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at School and Life Pod, S C H O L I N, lifepod.com, or give um, us a call at 814 826 4305. Um, I really love connecting um, with folks um, in person, in real life, um, but certainly virtually as well. Um, so if there's an opportunity to do that, please um, hit me up. I'd love to talk to you and support you through your graduate journey. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashley Adams. That was Awesome. Um, I think you had so much good information. And while y'all are like thinking and thinking on some questions, we're going to have our giveaway. <laughs> Let me share my screen real quick. It's going to take us a second. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh. Don't play me like that. All right. So we've got our giveaway, y'all. It is time. So what is the giveaway? So every, um, every session this, this summit, I've been giving away a 90-minute goal-setting planning session. And so this session is pretty much a 
90 minutes of us figuring out like your top three goals that you want to get for the summer. And then we're going to work together to um, create a week by week plan and plan out how you're going to make progress on whatever those goals are. And we're not just going to be doing academic goals. We're going to include a personal goal in there and we're going to talk and we're going to help. I'm going to help you figure out how to make that incremental progress. Right. And so when we're talking about, grit and growth and we want to have a mindset operating excellence a part of that is being organized and having a plan and and then executing that plan and so another way that i help to execute that plan is through the scholar circle which is a pre-dissertation support program that i've created we just completed the summer i mean excuse me the spring 2019 cycle and um it includes for the summer it'll have a live training session We've had multiple over the semester, so you'll have access to the entire library from the uh, past cycle. I, you all know, like Dr. Uh, Ashley has a podcast. I have a podcast with Black and in Grad School, and so you get an early release of all the episodes that come out before anyone else listens to them. And the way that we really help to establish like a community to help you maintain that mindset, to avoid fatigue, avoid frustration, is through our weekly co-working sessions. And so we all meet together, we check in on one another, we do our work together, and we make progress that way. And it's really a group of really invested individuals and really doing our best in graduate school. And so the planning session is the first piece of that um, program. And so I want to to provide it to you all and do what I can to help you have a great summer as you're getting ready to head to grad school or getting ready for your next year. Okay, so let's figure out the winner. If I can just switch screens real quick. So we've got 19 participants and I've been using a random number generator so you all know I'm not trying to take it, nothing, it's just random. So. We've got 19 people here. Let's see what number we get. All right. Um, Ashley, do you want us to start from the top or the bottom of the list? Oh, um, start at the top. Okay, we're going to start from the top. One, two, three. Oh, the number seven, right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Daria, you won. Congratulations. Congratulations, Daria. So, Daria, I will send you an email. Um, you're our fourth winner so far, and I'll send you an email to schedule your session, and congratulations. So, y'all, we're going to do this every single session, so if you didn't win yet, you still have two more chances tonight, and then three more chances tomorrow, so it's plenty of time. Um, and with that, I'm going to check the questions <laughs> there's some yays and some thank yous and some congrats y'all are like the sweetest um i see site black women there's also site assista so that's the other organization um and they both have a similar um goals and aims again to that signal boosting like dr clark was saying dr clark i'm sorry i was thinking of dr adams sorry so um one question that I have for you, Ashley, is, you know, with this, this grit and growth mindset, I feel like the fatigue part can take on a lot of different kind of, um, it can show itself in different ways. And so how can we, beyond self-care, like articulate, especially when we're dealing with fatigue to like our advisors or to our professors? Like, I feel like, I dealt with a lot of fatigue this past year and I've had a really hard time, I feel like articulating it well. Like I said something, but I don't feel like I did it in the best way. So as someone on the other side, what do you think is best? Yeah, I mean, I think that it depends on the level to which you are fatigued. Um, so I think if, so you know yourself best, right? So you know if this is like, I haven't been taking care of myself. And when I say that, <clears throat> I'm not talking about take self-care. I'm talking about taking care. So I'm talking about, I haven't been sleeping. I haven't really been drinking water. I have not been, um, like if you are, have a faith background, I haven't been praying. I haven't been doing my daily meditations. Like, you know, if it's that, um, and you can, you know, you might articulate that, hey, I need to take two days to really decompress um, and, you know, I'll be back on Thursday or whatever that is. And so like you, you know, when it's that if 
if you've taken those two days and you're not better, you're not rejuvenated, you're eat, you're drinking your water, you're minding your business, and you're not well, that's the point that I encourage you to um, utilize your resources, right? So if we go back to that slide and that idea of like, utilize your existing resources. Um, if you are a graduate student and at most universities, you have some access to healthcare. So figure out if it is the, there is a health related reason, right? Um, fatigue often has something to do with our, our health, um, whether that's mental or physical. So figure out if it's a physical health reason. If um, if it if 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 you do that and it's not physical health, then look at mental health. Most universities, colleges, and universities have a um, counseling and psychological center that's free to students, at least for a certain number of sessions. So go there. I would say, Alante, that I would not articulate that. I, I, so you do the first one, like you know, I'm just feeling run down. I need two days, whatever. Beyond that, until you get that physical and mental health checked out, I wouldn't articulate that to your advisor. I would do the work that you know need, you need to do to use your resources and then let that articulate it for you, right? Because like, you know, if, if you know, I advise students, if, if you come to me and you're like, I need two days, I need a week or whatever, okay, take the time you need. Be beyond that, I need to better understand, is this a medical issue? Is this a mental health issue? Because that way you don't have to speak for yourself. You can let your clinician speak for you. And then it's not like, do I believe them? Are they being valid? Like, I don't have to worry about that. There are protections for physical and mental health that protect you. So I would, I would just encourage you, you know, do that self check in, figure out, you know, get your two, two days a week, three days, whatever, a weekend, whatever it takes. If, if you're not well beyond that, then take, uh, do those avenues because even, and I would say, even if you are in a licensed clinical psychologist program, you still need, you shouldn't be diagnosing yourself. You need to in, use your resources and get professionals in there to help you. Um, and I recognize that um, there's some privilege with that statement because those things can be costly. But as students, my hope is that your university at least can help you with the basics um, related to physical and mental health. You're muted. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it let me like, you're muted and you're talking. Um, I, I definitely think that that's really a great advice, honestly, because I feel I've never thought to even reach out to like campus anything because I have a private therapist and a lot of things are off campus, but I guess I could even ask my therapist to write something for me. So you're right. And letting those existing resources kind of advocate on my behalf versus feeling like I have to fight and do it all on my own. I see what you did there. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Okay, well, it is 6.56, and y'all, we have another session. We're going back to back today. Lord. So, uh, Dr. Ashley, thank you so, so much. Thank you for having, um, for being on the show, the show. Thank you for being on the summit. Thank you so much for um, sharing so much great information and giving us the tools like to one, recognize what's going on, and then to help us kind of figure out and circumvent those issues. Y'all go follow, listen, everything to read everything that's going over at School and Life Pod. Like not only is it amazing content, it's also like very beautiful. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you I follow your designer too, because she did like, I'm like, I, I'm gonna just wait. <laughs> she but, does. Yeah, she does. She does an amazing job. And they have some great merch, all of the above. Y'all go show them love. Um, and thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Alante. Shout out to Black and Grad School. I'm a big fan of you all too. Thank you to all of you who attended. I, I definitely am so grateful for this opportunity. And I hope that there's ways that I can serve you. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I didn't put this up here um, just for show. I really am interested in connecting. If there's ways I can serve you, uh, let me know. And have a great rest of the summit. Thanks, Thanks Alante. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.